everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, Diane here. Today I'm going to paint an owl, a barn owl I think, because that's what we have here. And I'm going to put him in some oak leaves as decoration and first of all, before we paint the owl, I'll draw the owl. I'm going to show you how to draw um, oak leaves. Um, we've just picked these two little sprigs off of our trees in the garden just now and uh, noticed that we have two different kinds of, uh, let's put that out of the way for a minute, uh, two different kinds of oak. There's this one, I don't know what the names are of these two, but this has leaves that are fairly slender and uh, the acorns are this shape. They're not ripe yet, they're still green. And the other one has much broader leaves. They're more palmate, they're much wider. And uh, although these acorns aren't fully grown yet, it looks as if when they are grown, they're going to be more round, rounder than, than these ones. I don't think it's just because they are at an earlier stage, but we'll see when they eventually finish growing, whether the acorns are a different shape or whether that's just the stage of development. So I, I, I know that uh, oak leaves are tricky to draw. So what I'm going to do is just going to show you an easy way of, um, of doing it. So we'll take our sketchbook here and let's get started. So <coughs> the, this way of, oh, there's a bee, hello bee, or wasp. <coughs> this way, <coughs> excuse me, this way of drawing an oak leaf is quite clever. This was not my design, but um, someone else's. So what you do, first of all, that, that's the center stem, that's the vein. So if we look at the leaf, you can see I've drawn the vein there. And then you're going to start from down here where the stem comes in, and we're going to draw a line. Now, if we're doing one of these ones that is quite slim, we'll draw it like that. So we're making, making a triangle there. And then we're going to draw a a V shape there, and then we're going to join those two lines. So we've got up, across, up to the point, down, down, and across. And then the key is what we're going to do is we're going to put in one vein, which is about halfway along this line. The next vein is pointing at that point. The next vein is pointing there. On this side, that vein points to that join. This vein points to that join, and then this one is about halfway along that line. Okay, so that's the step, step one. And then we're going to put little caps over each of these. So upside down U's, like that, around the vein, like that doesn't really matter what sort of shape they are exactly. So now you've got your basic structure for the um, oak leaf. So starting here, that's where I would start. I'll just do that. Just put in another pop one down there. And then this, you join like that, then like that, then like that. Sometimes there's an extra one there. Join that and that and that, and then this one comes down one more bend, and there we are, so then you grow into the stem. So then, having once done that, you just rub out 
your guidelines and you are left with a perfect oak leaf. And uh, whoever thought of doing it that way is a genius because it's a very clever idea. Not mine, as I said, um, but some anonymous person years ago showed me that and I think it's a wonderful, wonderful idea. Once you've done that a few times, then you can freehand it and you'll be able to, to, to do it yourself quickly, en place, so to speak. But it's very, very useful. It also helps you think about where the veins go because you're going to want to put some veins in and so on. So that's that. And I hope that's helpful. Then the acorn, we've got, uh, here's my sketch that I was practicing on this morning. This is just another one of those. The acorn sits in a little cup like this. So basically all it is, it's a bit like an egg in an egg cup, isn't it? So I think the easiest way to do these is to think of them like that. Arthur, Arthur, quiet. Noisy pussycat. Um, so draw an egg shape like that and then the, um, the cup is about halfway up. So just draw a curved line there. And then, so this is the cup, but you're going to want to make it rounder. So you're going to do this. Oh, you are a noisy push. And then the stem that it's attached to comes out the bottom like that. And the whole of the, <clears throat> of the cup is, <clears throat> It's got textures, a texture on it like scales. So there are various ways that you could paint that, but you can, that's one way like that. And uh, so, so that's basically how you draw an acorn. And obviously you might want to adjust the shape a little bit if your acorns are not so long. Some acorns are very long, some are, are short. It's up to you what kind of tree you have. But one thing they do all have is a little pointy thing in the middle there. And obviously when you're painting it, you can do it whatever color you want. But if you were drawing it, you'd just put some shading in on one side like that. And so there we are. So that's how to draw one leaf and um, an acorn. And then if you wanted to draw a, uh, a twig, you would just obviously uh, start with the center part and then each leaf comes out. They come out altern al alternately like that. And uh, so you'd have your little stalks there and then your leaf would come out Oh, Arthur, your leaves will come out like that. And you, obviously then you go ahead and you do your shape like that, your veins like that, your round bits like that. And then you join them up. And as I say, after a few goes, you're going to have that off pat and that won't be, you won't have to draw that outline. You'll know exactly what you're doing to get them the right shape. So there we are. Okay, so I will turn the video off for a second, see what's the matter with that cat and come back and uh, we'll draw an owl. Okay, so the next thing to do is uh, to choose the colors I'm going to be using to paint this owl. And um, I've got a photograph here from a magazine um, from a long time ago, this is, well, not that long, Country Small Holding, May 2018. We used to subscribe to this. And this is a photograph of an owl, barn owl. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Just give me the, um, the colours um, that I'm going to be wanting. And um, I think I'm going to use, this is a colour called Davies Grey, which is a light 
<coughs> a light grey, which you might not have, but if you have, it's it's useful. And I'm also going to use Potter's Pink. I'm going to use a little bit of quinacridone gold, and I'm going to also use burnt sienna. And those are the colours that are going to um, give me this sort of overall effect um, as I use those. I'm going to use, um, this is uh, sepia, I think that's sepia. I'm going to use that for the eye of the bird and for some of the markings down here, some of the lines and obviously his talons as well down there. Maybe some of these spots on his body will do with that. So those are the colours that I'm going to use for the bird. And then um, when it comes to the, the leaves, I'm going to hint at autumn. And so I'm going to use, this is olive green. And I'm going to combine that with quinacridone gold and um, raw, uh, sorry, burnt sienna. And we're going to get some nice autumnal greens that way. If you don't have quinacridone gold, first of all, it's well worth the five or ten dollars investment because we use it a lot on these videos. Um, but if you don't have it, then, um, and you wanted to paint this straight away, you can make, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I have got a fro frog in my throat today. I need to uh, just clean this up. I'm just going to show you that you can make an approximation if you just use cadmium yellow, just cleaning that up there, um, cadmium yellow like this with a bit of burnt sienna so then you can get something which is not far off of quinacridone gold. Okay, I think you can see that that is pretty close. This is um, burnt sienna and cadmium yellow makes quinacridone gold. So in other words, if you were going to do what I'm going to do, which is to make autumn leaf colours, <clears throat> instead of using quinacridone gold and um, olive green, you would have to use um, you'd have to use cadmium yellow, burnt sienna and olive green and that would come to the same thing. So if you look at the overall effect here you can see that's going to be quite nice. The owl is going to be quite muted and then the leaves will be a little bit brighter. That's the idea. I'm going to be using my water brush here because it's a quick and easy way of painting. I quite like it. I've just discovered it so um, I'm still learning how to use it. But if you want to use an ordinary brush, the brushes that I usually use or have always used are these draw well brushes, which I get from Japan, which are a very nice synthetic round brush with uh, a good point. This one is a little bit worn out. Uh, let me show you, this is a new one. And uh, so that's got a perfect point. Um, I've got the information about draw well in the description below the video and you can contact them directly and they will send you your brushes very inexpensively and you can pay by PayPal and they don't uh, they don't charge too much for the shipping. It's quite good. I don't get any uh, kickback for that. That's just a, a recommendation which I like to share. So um, that's my sketches from earlier. Now this is the drawing I've done for the owl. I have just <clears throat> embellished him with oak leaves and acorns. And um, if you want, you can get this sketch free of charge from the website. You can download it free of charge uh, from dianeanton.com. So you just need to pop along over there. I will, uh, I will trace that and I'll put it up there for you so you can download it. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so first thing to do is always, as usual, as always, is to drop in the eye. Um, I always feel that gives a good uh, impression of the bird. So the first thing I do usually is to paint the eye. And uh, basically with the owl, it's very dark and we're just going to leave a little tiny light there for character. And uh, 
You can always adjust that later with a little bit of white, either white gouache or you can use um, uh, one of those white gel pens, which usually t is uh, perfectly effective. So the right hand eye is going to be slightly bigger because it's just slightly turned towards us and the one on the other side is a little bit darker, uh, sorry, a little bit smaller. Okay, so then um, I'm going to give him a, a sort of undercoat. So I'm going to use some of this Davies Grey with a little bit of pink in it and a little tiny bit of um, quinacridone or yellow just to give a sort of brownish grey. Um, because, I mean, although they are fairly white, they're not really white white. So we just put that in um, around his body. And I'm using the water brush because I can um, add water as I go down, making it lighter just by um, pressing on the bit where it says push. That just lets the water out a little bit. And of course you can make it the whole thing lighter just by increasing the amount of water. So this is effectively an undercoat. So we're going to just brush that in lightly over the whole body and wing area like that. And then I'll add a little bit more water and just make that all nice and melded. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, so still with the um, Davies Grey as the base, I'm going to now drop in something a little bit darker on his top of his head. And uh, that's Davies Grey plus a little bit of sepia. <clears throat> and then I'll just put something, some of that as well, around his face line here. And keep it nice and light. And then I'm just going to drag that down from the outside edge using a little bit of water from the water brush. You can do it also from a regular paintbrush, no problem. And we'll avoid his beak. And we'll do something similar on the top of his head there. We'll just soften that edge a little bit because there aren't that many hard, hard edges in nature, are there? And um, then with the same sort of pinkish brown colour, we'll just come in around here a little bit and just give him a bit more warmth. And the colour on the chest of the owl doesn't go down it gets lighter as it goes down and it'll start to have little specks there. And on this side, it's going to be a more kind of tawny gray color. So I'm mixing with the Davis gray, I'm mixing um, burnt sienna to get this, this kind of color. And then we'll brush in some of that and weaken it off as it goes over like that. So we have a nice blending and we take that up there, plenty of water, blend that in. And put a little bit of texture in there as well. And we'll let that whole thing dry. And then we'll come in with a few details. 
And while that's drying, we will paint some of the some of the leaves. So we said that we would do them sort of, I mean, at the moment, here we have, this is our oak tree here, and it's still very green. There's not a sign of autumn there. And in fact, in this part of the world, these trees, these oaks, they don't go um, red, yellow, brown or whatever until quite late. Often it's December before they turn their color. So, um, I'm going to have to use a little bit of uh, artistic license there. But what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'll paint some stems. And the stems are mm, brown. Uh, brownish green, yes, I haven't got a, there are, yes. Okay, so we'll pop those, some of those in. And then with the color that's on my brush, which is basically quinacridone gold, I'm going to start filling in the leaves. Now, if you want to um, draw some veins into the leaves, which I think for oaks is probably quite a nice idea because they're quite distinctive, I suggest using a credit card or what I'm using here is an Ikea card, which I think is probably the best thing to do with a store card is to use it for painting. Um, so what I like to do is to vary the colors of my leaves. I don't like them to all be one color. So I'll vary the background first of all by putting different shades of brown in and then come in with some green and just give that a little bit of freedom and then this, with these colours, it's quite nice to draw the vein in. So you just drag that IKEA card through the paint. And what happens is the paint sinks into the scratch marks and uh, makes a darker area um, on the paper, which looks like the veins of the leaf. So here I'm just coming in with some light yellowish colour and I'll do two or three at the same time sometimes like that and then drop in the green and if I've left it fairly wet like that then it'll run really readily and if I use the paint much thicker it doesn't run quite so much I think leaves are one of the most underrated things really because painting them is very enjoyable, I find. I'm going to do the acorns as if they were ripe so we'll make them a nice brown colour. Let that bleed a little bit. Don't forget the Ikea card. 
So the veins go to the points of the leaves where they bulge out. That's what makes them look right. I think I've got just a tiny bit too much paint there. Okay, now the owl is uh, a bit drier now, so I'm looking at my reference. And I think his beak, we're going to do that in Potter's Pink. Like that, and just a little bit of shadow underneath will make it... Um, a sort of brownish colour down underneath like that. And then we need um, a darker colour around his eyes, which are now dry. And then we want to just drag that down a little bit. and uh, soften the top edge as well a little bit. And then he needs um, some shading down the center of his head like that. So we just do that like that. And this is going to go out a bit. Okie dokie, now maybe just a few, a few little flecks on top of his head. And then we need to start darkening a little bit his back. And we don't want to make that too solid, so we're just going to put strokes Okay, so I'm going to put some burnt sienna down the front here, sort of trying to give a kind of feathery effect and a little bit of um, sepia mixed with grey and um, a little bit of Potter's pink. like that. And then we'll drop in a little bit more Potter's Pink here for a few markings, a bit down here, just a little bit. That will dry lighter, of course. And put a little bit here as well on his forehead. And um, some Potter's Pink mixed with Burnt Sienna just around the face a little bit. Don't want to come in with anything too dark there because it will look um, too heavy. But we will want a few uh, sort of sharper contrasts. As well. We will let that bleed, and then I'm just putting in the shadows underneath the feathers on his wings, a little bit of his back there, and then a little bit more Davies Grey, 
Just a little bit of shadow here on the side of his cheek. Blend that in. There we are. And um, then he has some specks on the breast area. We're not going to go into any great detail with that. Um, and I might just darken up a little bit this area. around the eye. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and uh, meanwhile we'll just continue on with the, the leaves over here. So again, dropping in a base colour and then coming in afterwards with the green and letting that blend, giving the impression of autumn on the way. Scratch in the veins and go to the next one. With whatever's left on your brush, you don't need to pick up a new colour because this is very natural and nature never does the same thing twice, so why should we? That's a nice colour as it is, that's a blend from the brush. these acorns here so we'll do their little cups then I'll let them dry before I put in the nut part that one I think I'll leave in that color because that just looks nice and so on and so on vary the colour of the stem a little bit. That one I did in quinacridone 
This one I'm going to do in green and uh, just drop something darker in there. This one just needs a little bit more darks. So I'll just carry on with these uh, leaves and uh, acorns. Oh yes, down here we've got these ones that need to be made into nice brown nuts. There's the other one, that's it. Um, and while I'm doing this, I'm just going to have a chat uh, with you about something we've just started. We've just signed up to um, YouTube's membership scheme, which is uh, a system to benefit everybody who uh, follows our channel. And uh, first thing I want to say is for people, for anyone who doesn't, isn't interested in this offering, don't worry because I'm not changing anything that I'm doing. Nothing is going to change, but we are, we have signed up to YouTube's channel membership scheme. And what that is, is you have the choice, the option of, um, in order to help us by supporting us as we, because we do this for free. Uh, and uh, it's it would be nice. Some people have already um, told me that they would like to do something to support us. Um, so we have taken advantage of YouTube's generous system, which I think is a good one. Um, and you can sign up to membership. It's like joining a club. And um, the memberships start at $2.99 or £2.99 or €2.99, depending on which country you're in. That's their choice. That's YouTube's idea. But it would be like that. Anyway, so that's what that is. And um, which is not a vast amount of money. And for two ninety nine, if you join, you get loyalty badges, which um, show up whenever you post a message or anything, a comment. And you can use emojis and we will be having lives and live streams and paint alongs and things like that um, when all that sort of thing becomes handy if you're interested in that kind of thing, which can be really good fun. Um, and also you will have the opportunity to vote for a particular topic each month. And because I do take notice of what people suggest, this painting, these uh, oak leaves are directly in response to one of our followers who asked if I would do a tutorial that included oak trees and I hope it's going to be helpful to her. Um, and as well, you get um, extra footage, out, outtakes and all sorts of things like that. Um, and uh, extra videos of things that are going on in our garden with our animals and that kind of thing. So, and that, that will just be short videos that I will take, which are not edited in any way, just um, home video type of things, which I think might be quite fun because we've got all these dogs and sheep and cats and vegetables, all these things. Um, so yeah, so that's $2.99. And then for four ninety nine, if you wanted to go up to the next level, this is a month. So you can cancel any time you like. And there's absolutely no obligation to join this at all. It's entirely optional. Nothing on YouTube on our channel is going to change. I will still be doing a daily video and I will still answer your questions. It's just this is an option for people who might want to join the club, so to speak. Um, so for four ninety nine, you get everything that you get for two ninety nine, plus you get um, the an invitation to join the private Facebook group that I've set up, which 
is not going to be available to non-paying subscribers. This is just going to be very exclusive and just for people who want to interact um, via Facebook, be able to share your paintings there and so on, um, and talk to me and so on. And there will be a monthly free digital gift. So some kind of download uh, will be completely free. So it might be a, uh, a some kind of written tutorial, some kind of um, uh, a print of some sort that you could print out. We're not sure exactly. We don't have a list, but something free, something special every month. And then for the highest tier, for eight ninety nine a month, that's dollars, pounds, or euros. You get all the previous perks that I've just mentioned, plus you get a discount on the merchandise that we're going to be selling, which will be things like um, mugs with our logo and pictures on, and um, anything from, you know, like bags or t-shirts, that sort of thing. And, um, and also, for the top level at eight ninety nine, the the extra special thing that we're offering is that if you want it, you can have every three months. I'll do a <clears throat> critique on one of your paintings. So you'll just send me one of your pieces of work, and um, I will give you feedback on it and constructive criticism, um, written in the form of a PDF. <coughs> Excuse me that you'll be able to keep, possibly even with illustrations. Not quite sure exactly of the details yet because it's all very new. Um, so yeah, so those are the three levels. And um, I really hope that some of you are going to decide to join so that we can have some really good conversations. Together. I'm just putting some a few sharper darks in there just to make this <coughs> a little bit more three dimensional. And now we're coming up towards the last few. And um, then once I've done these ones, I will go back to the bird and see how the owl has progressed. Remember, this is available as a sketch you can download for free from the website, no charge at all. paper dries really quickly. I have to remember to scratch in my veins straight away or else it doesn't work. Oops, I think I put my hand on there, didn't I? To put another Right, this one I forgot to do the veins, so I'll just have to paint those in. There we are. And let's see. Is there anything I need to do to the owl? Possibly might need 
These are the nostrils there. Uh, maybe I'll just put a little bit I'm not going to play around too much over here, but they do have uh, quite a definite pattern on their wings. But I quite like the soft kind of um, not too defined. I'm just going to make the eye a little bit rounder at the top. And um, I just suddenly thought, oh yes, the little bit of shadow on the acorn with cups there. This one needs a little bit of a vein. And then what I need to do now is to um, rub out the pencil lines. Pretty sure this side is all completely dry because I did all of that before I had lunch. So anyway, going, going back to the membership thing, if you are interested and don't forget, I'm going to say it again, Fear without for fear of um, being repetitive, I will say it again, there is absolutely no obligation. It's something that I want to do to offer you something extra. Um, but, you know, in return, you would pay $2.99 a month or $4.99 or $8.99, up to you, and you get these perks accordingly. Um, all you have to do is click on the Join button which is next to the subscribe button when you look at the video before you, when you're looking at the thumbnail, you'll see that now there's a button there that says join. So just click on that and it will tell you all about the different levels. It's all written down very clearly there for you. If you have any questions about it at all, don't hesitate to ask in the, um, in the comments below, you can pop me a question there. Or you can go to our website and there's a way of chatting with me there. You can send me an email via the website, dianeanton.com. Somebody, somebody said yesterday, is that an owl in the background? They could hear the do 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 do. That's actually a wood pigeon, but we, Funnily enough, although, you know, you wouldn't think it, but it's true. We have actually got a day owl here that lives in a tree just over the way, and he does hoot. So it's possible that whoever said, was that an owl in the background? They might have picked that up. There might have been a, a bit of a to bit woo going on out there. I didn't hear it, but that is a wood pigeon. That's wood pigeon or collared dove. Um, we have both, but we do actually also have owls. Oh, sugar. As my mother used to say, least said, soonest mended. Okay, so there's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, 
I think I've chatted on long enough about this and that and you don't need to hear another word from me. So I will let you go and I'll say thank you very much for being here. Like and subscribe. Join channel membership if you feel like you'd like to. Give it a try. You can cancel any time. So I'll let you go now and I'll... Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is one small thing to just finish this off. It really looks as if it could do with just... Because I don't want anybody saying, oh, you did something afterwards. No, I didn't. A little bit of spatter goes a long way. There we are. And we just smoosh that a little bit. You don't have to smoosh it if you don't want to. Okay. Bye everyone. See you soon. Bye bye.